Come on, everyone, and welcome alongside Joel Rindelob. We are ready to, for action. International Ice Hockey, Joel. This is big. This is actually bigger than big. This is huge. We haven't seen international ice hockey. Well, at least the Aussie side hasn't been here since 2006. So we are going to see a show tonight. Absolutely. So stay dialed in. Thank you very much for tuning into this live stream broadcast. They're just having a moment of silence uh, to remember Dale Harrop. So ladies and gentlemen, we ask that uh, we observe this moment of silence with us in memory of one of our greatest ice blacks, number six, Dale Harrop, uh, who passed away in a tragic accident in December 2022. Uh, he's someone who embodied all it meant to be a great ice black, and he's behind a, a legacy of sportsmanship, kindness, determination. Dale was a senior member of the New Zealand men's team and will forever be remembered in our hearts. And our teams gather here today to play the game we love. We do so in his honor. And that's Tomas landed to his left, and we are underway. That is Rob Hazelhurst, who has the puck here for the Aussies. And here's Chalice now. He'll break it out. Long pass for Ellis. Does a nice job to control that. There's a sure shot right on, but Charlie Smart is on it under control. That's the line that I think New Zealand's really got to look out for was those two CBR teammates because they know how to get it done. Now here's a turnover right in front and a blocker saved by Chaba. Had to really reach for that one. Another giveaway is number 16, Tyler Kubara. Had a nice shot on goal there. Forcing the Ice Blacks to regroup. Now in the far corner. Played over to Dag. Dag puts one towards the net. Shot, rebound, and a save made by Charlie Smart as he's once again tested. Yeah, stopping the Ice Black captain, Andrew Cox. Down low. And Landa spins away from Joyce. Centering feed here. There's a shot, rebound. Oh, how oh, did that wow, stay Wow, that was out? going straight to that far post, Joel. It looks like Chaba managed to use his jersey and body to stop that puck. As we see it here on the replay, Ozzy goes behind the net. Avoids the hit, spins off well, keeps control of the puck, passes in front, takes the one time, off balance. Chaba is there to cover it. Right to the stick of Webster, and now he chips it out. Here comes Viryasov. Viryasov trying to make a move, spins around one, but unable to pull oh, the trigger. Some nice, sweet dangles, and he gets kind of hooked from the back. I think the referee's got an indication, yes, that will be the penalty here, Joel. So starting things off here will be Casey Kubera for the Australia Mighty Roos. On the power play here for a minute and three. And now that's Strayer who'll dump it in. Or trying to beat Malloy to the puck. But said it's Virasov who's able to dig it out of the corner. Here's a turnover, shot right on, and a blocker saved by Charlie Smart. Who had and once again, here's Hazelhurst. Hazelhurst puts one towards the net, but a glove saved by Chaba as he was able to see that one all the way. Yeah, now Pataki plays it down low towards Caruana, there's a shot and a goal! One-timer feed, and the Australians take the first lead. Yeah, they draw first blood here, getting that opening goal. It's taken almost 26 minutes of play as the defenseman hands it down in the corner and then it's received behind the net. Feeds it in front, open there, and gets that one-time shot, and it just squeaks through Chaba. Opening this game up for a lead to the Australian. So Burt Malloy has it. He'll go cross ice. He finds Virasov. And up to Kamenzin. Leaves it right back to Virasov. Over to Kamenzin again. He puts one right on. Save made. Rebound still loose. Chaba. Oh, and they and score. he can't quite get it a goal. Batted it out of the air. Back in. What great passing by the Aussies. Literally keeping the puck away from the Kiwis. And making it look fairly easy as the shot comes through. Deflected in front. On the backhand was number eight. Burt Malloy with his first goal of the game, and it's a two-goal lead for the Mighty Roo. And now here comes Casey Kubra. He's got a little bit of space, trying to go back door, but Pataki couldn't quite get a stick on it. Well, that puck was up around his chest level, so kind of hard when it's that high. And now here's an opportunity for the Ice Blacks. Ellis, three on one, shot, oh, what a save, rebound to the goal! An own goal scored. And the Ice Blacks get themselves on the board. Well, there you go, Joel. It just takes a shot on net for something to happen. Fraser Ellis gets the puck. As you'll see here, the Kiwis looking up ice. Puck comes into the middle. Then he gets it. Pass over to Ellis. Makes the shot off the blocker, off the save. And it goes, unfortunately, off the skate of Bailey Kubra back into the goal. Who's 
usually got that thing on a slow oh, opportunity for Cox as he just missed. And he misfires there. Again, they're looking to do that. Oh, breakaway here, 17. Ozzy coming in. Oh, and he's hooked down by Dago. Caruana oh, could not pull the trigger on that opportunity, and now we got some end-to-end -end action as Kozak takes it into the zone. Leaves it for Burns all alone. Oh, rebound and, and a goal! They score! Andrew Cox ties the game! What a shift in momentum, Joel. That is unbelievable. Kiwi striking to tie this game up. With their last two shots, they have got two goals. That's great shooting percentage. Kiwis break over the line. A little bit of a backhand. It's actually the Aussies that pass that puck inadvertently to Burns. Polozov gets it over, and Cox, with the goalie down, he puts it in that open net. What a goal. One of the, trying to get a change, but unable to do it so. And here comes Australia. And now Eden with some chance. Chris Eden all alone. Eden and he shoots and a huge save by Smart. This is one of three games this weekend. So stay tuned for some great ice hockey action. International, I might add. International ice hockey is back here in Auckland, New Zealand. Tied two apiece with just 20 minutes to play. That is broken up by Kubra. And now he gets it right back. Casey Kubra into the zone. Trying to get around tap and centering feet there to go! Uh, it's Habe Darge does. for Australia and they are back up on top. 3-2 just like that as they strike. Almost like a Taipan or a brown snake. Man, oh man, that was fast as you see. The puck gets brought over the line. Nice hard drop the D down. Finds the man in that high slot uncovered. One-time shot between the legs, just beats Chubb at five hole. It's Hazelhurst up the wall. He's able to get that towards Taylor, and then it's Todd again. Todd into the zone. With a centering feed shot and a goal! Tomas Landa puts the Australian team up a deuce. Australia striking, making a two-goal lead, and then they have a two-on-two. Two. It's a good shape, but a stumble by the defenseman here allows Todd to make a play around, and the other D down on the ice, not in the best position, trying to cover both grounds, and that results in the Australians doubling up on their lead. Taking it. But Ellis was there, now another turnover. Shot right in front, off the iron! Great opportunity for Bo Taylor, but he cannot convert. He leaves that for Corona. Brings it into the zone, absorbs a hit from Polzoff, but still with possession of the puck. Corrado puts it in, and he scores! What a goal! That's highlight reel material there. Matt Corona with the goal, and Australia up by three. Wow, as he takes the hit, absorbs, makes a play, comes around. Power move to the net, gets Chaba down. Upstairs we go. As it pops out to Virasov, now a two-on-one with Webster. Virasov over to Webster, but just floated over his stick. Didn't have the right sauce on that one. <laughs> but the Kiwis come right back the other way. But and that, will, that do will do it. At the end of regulation, it is a 5-2 win for the Australia Mighty Roos, and they're going to like what they see from their side. Harimai, Hokimai, and welcome back to Auckland, New Zealand. We are in Tamaki Makoro, coming at you with game two action between the Australian Mighty, Mighty Roos and the New Zealand Ice Blacks. I'm Joel Rindelof, alongside Ian, the Dream Wanamaker. <laughs> Too kind, sir. Giving you all the action tonight. Last night, though, with the recap, quite a game. Went back and forth, tied at the end of two, but Australia powered through to take that one home. Yeah, the final result, a 5-2 game in favor of the Australians. The uh, Kiwis really showed some fire in that second to come back and equalize, and they get two goals in 36 seconds, Joel. So there is opportunity there to strike and strike quickly and often if the Kiwis really apply themselves. It's a fast game, and surely they're going to be trying to build it off this home crowd because they haven't played here in Auckland against the Aussies since 2006. There is going to be a lot of emotion with a sold-out packed to capacity crowd here at Paradise Botany. So you're definitely in for another trait, like if you've seen last night's game, or if you didn't, this this is another game to watch. This is the second of three games. 
Thank you very much for tuning in to watch this live broadcast. It's amazing. There's so many things going on in Tamaki Makoto this evening. Three massive concerts, Joel. And I would say this is the biggest event of all of them. We've got Snoop Dogg in town. We've got My Chemical Romance and, of course, the Backstreet, Backstreet Boys. Boys. Can they be called boys anymore? I mean, really, they got to be in their late to mid-40s, surely, by well, now. If you weren't here, which one of those would you be at? Whoa. Chemical Romance, I think, actually. Oh, a little. Yeah, I don't mind it too much. Yeah, I mean, Snoop emo, Dogg, if you like that rap, hip hop. Yeah. That, okay. Not too much. Yeah. But ba Backstreet, Backstreet Boys. Back, yeah, right. that's true. They don't come around too often. That's very poppy. Hey, whatever you're into, right. you're into. But this is certainly something to watch. Well, I'll tell you what, there is a lot of action here in Tamaki Makoro this evening. So thank you for taking your time to join us here. This is going to be a sold out capacity crowd. And let's just talk a little bit about this game number two. What are some of the key points that the Ice Blacks are going to need to keep up with the Mighty Roots? It's always little things for me, Joel, and that starts in the defensive zone. Winning a faceoff, getting that puck out cleanly, being there for the man that has the puck in behind the goal and the side of the boards. Get through the Aussies' forecheck if it's the hard 2-1-2 one, uh, two, one, two, or they're going to play that soft forecheck 1-2-2. One, two, two. Whatever they're doing, they need to be able to effectively do that, pass to the tape, break out with speed, put the Aussies under pressure because the Australians, they really limited the Kiwis' chances yesterday and took advantage and had so many shots, almost 2-1 to one in the game in total shots, and they doubled them up quickly in the score, resulting in a 5-2 game. Yeah, some excellent points there. They're also going to have to contain that top line for Australia. Very potent. Casey Kubara, Wahid Dodge. Darge. And, of course, the goal scorer, Matt Caruana, who got the fifth tuck last That was night. a highlight real goal. If you missed that, go back and watch that goal because it was unbelievable. He took on three New Zealand players, deked around, doing a power move to the backhand, forehand, top shelf. What a great highlight goal. So each of those three forwards were able to put one in the net last night, and really that was the difference in the game with a 5-2 to two victory for Australia. Yeah, and having that them in on the score sheet, that takes the three goals just from that one line. That's already beating the two goals from the Kiwis, and then they add two more from their depth. They have such depth on that Australian team. Guys that have played an awful lot of games in an AHL competition, so they are well, well established for success. Absolutely. So no surprise then we might see a few lineup changes tonight for the Ice Blacks, maybe trying to pair some speed together to try to combat that depth and, of course, the speed that Australia has up and down that roster. Yeah, the one addition from the, or subtraction, I should say, that's real notable is Justin Daig is not in the New Zealand lineup. He's been substituted out of the game for Alex Regan. So taking that defensive pair, uh, well, not defensive pair, but adding in Alex Regan, a little bit younger, different style of play. So we'll see um, how he adjusts to international play here on the ice at Botany. A fast young player undoubtedly will use this ice surface to his advantage. But we're also going to see a mixed match lineup where we've got Alex Polozov, the longtime veteran, playing with Joe Orr and then Chris Eden. So very fast line for the Ice Blacks. Maybe a bit smaller in stature, but built thick with a lot of goal scoring prowess to boot. Yeah, and a lot of speed. And they're going to have to use that speed to their advantage and um, try and get around the Australians, make the Australians pivot and move, get them out of that structure. They play a very structured game, and it was evident last night just a couple of things to note all-time games played new zealand against australia 25 the kiwis have won five of them five out of 25 five out of 25 that's that's, that's a low percentage that's there 20 joel I would thank say. you yeah well you are not just saying it that's accurate that's a fact so aussies have won 20. new zealand have scored 49 goals in those 25 games just over a goal a game and then the australians 201. So that just tells you and shows you the little bit of discrepancy there in terms of that offensive talent on the Australian side. And again, emphasis on defense for the Kiwis if they want to transition to their own offense to start getting some goals on the board. I would say it's almost a direct correlation there mathematically between goals scored and number of wins in this series. Yeah, and uh, there was Who a 5-2 game. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you are. So I'm not a betting man, but um, I hope let's see if the Kiwis can get up tonight and make it a 1-1 series game. You don't know. It uh, hasn't been happening yet, but tune in for this game because it's going to be another ripper. Well, if history is anything to show, the New Zealand Ice Blacks have taken home the Trans-Tasman Test when they have been played 
here in Aotearoa. Mm. So maybe yeah. they can build off some of that momentum, especially with that home crowd, try to make this the, the Eden Park of New Zealand ice hockey, if you will. Well, that's a big call. You know, the Aussies will be up for it as well. And um, they, they showed yesterday that they are, they are very comfortable with their team and they play well as a unit. So they have that maybe an advantage there. I don't know with this, the, some of the unstructured play that it was evident in the Kiwi game. Let's see if they've tidied that up. They've talked about it, discussed it, and now they're ready to go. Definitely some new faces out there for the Ice Blacks compared to this Australian side. Same lineup. Are rolling the exact same lineup out tonight due to that effectiveness. And of course, these players have played with each other ad nauseum. Yes, they played at, they're very experienced. They played in that Australian league for some of them 10 plus years, eight, five, six years, different different club teams, but that definitely translates to success, breeding success if they played at such a high level and then competing with each other against the Kiwis. You know they're always gonna get up against the, the New Zealand side when it's this close to home, the closest countries in proximity to each other, separated by a body of water. Hey, it's gonna be a battle. I mean, you've played in this international series yourself, well, I mean, how is it playing against Australia or New Zealand when you're in that dressing room? Do you get a little bit extra just because you know that there's always that rivalry there? Oh, 100%. If there would be something wrong with you if you didn't get up for a big game, big game players raise their game up in big moments, and you want to see them step up in the moments when they're needed or called upon. You don't want them to fold the tent, collapse. You need them to perform and this is a game of performance you want to see the best performance on the ice this is the stage for it you have international play here it's not just a club level game it's not even a national league game this is international competition the best hockey you're going to see in this country so stay tuned for another amazing match it should be a good one new zealand is going to want some revenge after losing the opening test by a score of five to two to the australian mighty ruse but we still got two games left to play, and anything can happen here at Tamaki Makoro. Certainly, yeah. I, I don't have any predictions yet, but as we look at getting a shot of the gleamingly clean ice cut there, it's still quite fresh, a little bit wet, a couple of little patches there, but we won't say too much on that. Waiting for the officials to get on the ice and get this underway. Hopefully all the uh, sound checks and pre-checks will be tickety-boo and... Ready to get go. Those, get those anthems, too. What would be your clicks to pick tonight for each roster? Which one? Sorry, say it again. Your clicks, your your picks to click. Oh, picks, that's right. <laughs> clicks we're, we're, to uh, click. we're down under here. Everything's backwards. Yeah. Well, the Kiwis have started Hasselman tonight. So this he's a, a, a little bit, not an unknown, but he's a, a man that hails from Canada originally, I believe. And he stands six foot five, and he is a very tall goaltender, taking up a lot of the Getting Hasselman out there and Chaba right in behind him. Uh, that would be my one of my picks to send him out there first, give him an acknowledgement. But you can't not look at the goaltending on that other side because Charlie Smart played lights out yesterday. A couple of, well, one unfortunate bounce got him behind him, and then one straight away afterwards who's probably trying to regroup from that. Look to him to rebound because that man has a well over 900 save percentage in the Australian League, and he'll look to mimic that again here tonight in fact taking his newcastle north stars all the way to the grand finals where of course they did lose to the cbr brave which are well represented in this lineup notably on that top line with waheeb darge and casey kubera who was the leading scorer in the aihl last year so again look for them to click but i'm going to go with jamie woodman oh from great the point Australian great, great side. choice a fantastically talented defenseman that is a great skater and can take that puck end to end and really put pressure on those ice blacks deep. Oh, that's a great solid pick. Um, he kind of, just with that smooth skating, he's got that um, Bob Yor esque ability. I know that's huge, huge comparison, but um, also leadership. He's an assistant captain. Certainly something that's very valuable for that Australian team. So we'll take a brief moment here while we recognize the national anthems of each respective country.
And here we go, some ice hockey, the second test of this three-test Trans-Tasman Challenge between the New Zealand Ice Blacks and the Australia Mighty Roos coming at to you very shortly. Well, strap yourselves in, grab yourself your favorite beverage, <laughs> sit down in front of that telly if you got it live stream, or if you're here in action, please enjoy international ice hockey in Tamaki Makoto, Aotearoa, New Zealand. At the Hive. At the Hive, home of the Botany Swarm of the New Zealand Ice Hockey League. And it is packed. Absolutely wall to wall, not a standing room spot in sight. This is gonna be a loud one, Ian. Oh, you got that one there, Joel. Every single seat here is covered and um, each spot around the glass, there is someone standing directly behind it. So this is going to be absolutely exciting. And we are very thrilled to be able to call the action here this evening on Saturday night. Of course, New Zealand are once again playing without number six, Dale Harrop, who will be honored much this weekend after his tragic passing in December from a surfing accident. Sorely missed in the New Zealand ice hockey scene, but still carried on with us here this weekend. Yeah, we hope his spirit will live on with us, and um, we're all thinking of you, Dale. And we are underway. Game two is up and running here in Tamaki Makoto. So Australia will start from their own end. And played up the wall towards center ice. That was Kubra who lost a twig on that play as Lowe was throwing his body around. And we might see a little bit more physicality this time around. Yeah, I expect that to happen tonight. Definitely want to gain some territory early. And here's Darge over to Kubra, back door. Oh, what a And he shot. fans on it. Oh, Hesselman was sliding crease to crease, side to post to post. And Daniel Pataki could not quite pull the trigger, but what a great opening play here with a tic-tac-toe and just off the toe of the stick of Daniel Pataki, unable to put it home. And in that sequence of play, unfortunately, the New Zealand Ice Blacks have been penalized a delay of game as Andrew Cox sent that puck up over the glass, into the mesh, uh, over the mesh actually, resulting in an Australian power play real early. So a delay of game call sets the Ice Blacks against the wall early and Hazelhurst here at the top of the point here. Puts one through, that actually hit the shin pad of Todd and easily cleared by Eden. Certainly quieted this building really quick as no one really expected a penalty that quick or early. Referee setting that tone. Turnover at center ice was dangerous as Eden was trying for a shorthanded break, but unable to get it to him was Sasha Polozov. Now played into the zone. Chalice, the first one there for the Ice Blacks, over skates it here. Bit of a mistake. And now played to Kennedy. Nice stick by Chalice to recover. Able to steal the puck, throws it around, but nobody home. And instead, that will be Landon to play the puck. Landon, Todd, now up to point to Hazelhurst. Landon again, centering feed here, all alone, unable to do much with it, but Chalice is gonna go for a hooking. Yeah, that man was wide open in front slot there as that uh, high value real estate. Chalice getting the stick and preventing that shot to come through. Kiwi's going to be down five on three here. First period of play, not even two minutes in. Massive hole to climb out of here. Not the way the Ice Blacks wanted to start. In fact, they knew yesterday that Bo Taylor was going to be the focal point in the slot for the power play, but yet they did not cover him just with a stick play to go down two men here. So a great opportunity for Australia to capitalize early. So here's Woodman at top. He'll play it over to Malloy. Now Woodman, one-timer, that's deflected wide, but kept in by Malloy. Down low towards Biryasov. Biryasov, plenty of time. Centering feed towards Webster, try to hack at it, but that hops off the boards and into the netting for a whistle. And a new rule change yesterday's referee, Chris, he came up and uh, spoke to us in the commentary booth just to clarify, whenever the puck is shot out of the zone, in this case, defensive zone for the Kiwis by either team, the faceoff will remain inside of that zone. So Kamenzen wins the draw here for the Ruse. And it's played towards from Birsov, skating towards the net. Looking for a feed, plenty of time here. Tries to go back door towards Kamenzen, unable to connect. 
And now Kamenzen with just 15 seconds remaining on that first power play. Now far corner, it's Kamenzen. Trying to work towards Burns. Up to Malloy. He doesn't like what he's passing. Over to Woodman, throws it towards and a big skate saved by Hasselman, his first of the evening. And now here's an opportunity for the Ice Blacks, two on one the other way towards Ellis. Trying to get it back towards Cox. Cox in his feet, puts one right on, but Smart's there for the save. Yeah, well executed there as uh, Cox came out of the penalty box and managed to get a hold of that pass from Ellis. And here we see it here, Ellis playing kind of like a swap a back, back over to Cox, off the skate, kind of cuts in, takes his shot, but Smart is there to hold on. Great so the job Kiwis. by Ellis there to kind of suck three defenders toward him to give Cox a little bit of space and able to get that shorthanded shot on goal. So the Kiwis killed one penalty. They are still shorthanded with down one man here, five on four in favor of the Australians. So Caruana has it now for the Ruse. He'll elect to skate it himself. Going coast to coast here. Great job to get into the zone. And that'll be Pataki. Over towards Cooper, and we have a, a whistle. whistle. That is as a result of the score clock not ticking down, so that possibly will be reset or adjusted momentarily and hopefully putting the appropriate time back on that clock as the Australians still have what's listed as 46 seconds on their power play. Kiwi's looking to kill that off as quickly as possible to get back to even strength. So a bit of a clock malfunction actually in the favor of New Zealand as they're able to get some fresh legs out there on the PK. And they win the draw and are able to clear. So great opportunity here as with less than 40 seconds left as Polzov steals the puck, skates towards the net, runs into a sandwich of Aussie Ruse and still has control of the puck. Centering feet towards Eden, puts one right on. But that is sent aside, some great energy here by the Ice Blacks on the PK. Polozov creating a lot of time there for himself and set up Eden beautifully. But a great, great block by the Aussie Ruse, getting a, a skate on that attempt by Eden. So here's Regan with his first action for the Ice Blacks. And it's cleared out of the zone here. So killing off a five on three, massive for the Ice Blacks early. They will be taking a lot out of that. Got in a hole, now they're out of it. Now they're back to five on five. So here's Regan with the puck. Tries to get it towards Chalice and able to get it up towards Eden, but not out. Great defensive work there by the Aussie Ruse, and they'll get a change and some fresh legs out here on the attack. Now played over to Lane. He's looking up ice, and it's left there for Chalice. Chalice with some speed in the zone, puts it right on, but once again, smart is there. Yeah, long range shot by Chalice. Good to test the goalie like that early, but um, he did have wingers to his right and to his left. As the Kiwi says, you see here, managed to clear that puck off the defenseman's glove. And Polozov, one against two, one on one here, out muscles the man, gets the puck back. Great cut in move, gets sandwiched, still stays on his feet to hold onto that puck. Does set up Eden in the process. And the Kiwi's got one of their better chances of this opening frame. And now here's Manwaring with a little bit of a room. Puts one right on, but Hasselman there to make the save. So a lot of shots from distance here when the goalies have been up for it. Yeah, well, that's it. And yesterday's game, we saw shots from outside as well, but there were bodies in the way or in the shooting lane on purpose, and guys were deflecting or redirecting that shot, trying to get a shot in through a deflection. This time, players electing to go right at the goal, looking for a rebound. So here's Biryasov, centering feed. Oh, what a save on Webster as Hasselman was moving left to right. Goodness, don't blink as that happened in a very quick split second. And now the Ice Blacks trying to get something going in the offensive zone. And instead squirts out to Hayward Jones. He's looking far side. And Australia forced to recover. Here's Biryasov. He finds his centerman in Cam is in, and now it's Webster on the far side. Webster cuts towards the middle, is looking for a streaking Jamie Woodman, the defenseman getting up into the play, but that deflects in to the netty. So yes, again, just to recap a little bit on what I said earlier, and any deflection, that was off the Kiwis, um, the puck will remain dropped inside of the New Zealand zone as the referees confer, and that is the case, so they will drop the puck just to the right of Joel Hasselman. 
So here's Nick Henderson with the puck for the Ice Blacks. He goes off the wall looking for Ellis. No icing here as Ellis uses the wheels. And now a battle for the puck with Hazelhurst. Hazelhurst is a way to come out of it. Plays that up towards Newmark. And now here's Todd. That's taken from him and out of the zone, and it's Bo Taylor. Taylor over for Todd. Todd leaves it, and a big shot there by Landa's blocked. And now here come the Ice Blacks the other way with Chalice. Just tipped into the zone nicely by Burns. Actually goes on net, forcing Smart to make the smart play and hold on. Yes, he did, and that did allow the Kiwis to make a line change, fresh line change to get five new players out on the ice. It looked like the Kiwis were at the end of their shift. So they will be pleased to get Andrew Cox's line out there with Strayer and Kozak. With the back end by, that is Alex Regan, even though the name on the back says Daigle, with Nichols on the right side of the D side. So the captain Cox for the Ice Blacks, of course, playing for the Perth Thunder. And we have that dangerous CBR lineup here with Casey Kubera and Wahib Darge on the ice. Man, that shot is blocked, trying to find Kozak, but instead goes right to Bailey Kubera. And now Ozzy's into the zone. This is Casey Kubera. He'll just backhand it behind the net, looking for Darge. Darge able to play it with his skate. Centering feed here, and a goal! Casey Kubera puts it home, and the Aussies are up early. Almost making a little bit look easy there as they struck strike on what looked like a broken play. But, man, as Kubera sends it with a backhand behind the net, Hasselman comes out a little bit. Darge off the skate here, goes in around the net, on the backhand, centers it. Avoiding coverage as Kubara doing that well. Got in, got in behind Alex Regan, and he puts it away. That CBR connection, we mentioned it's going to be big, and it has been huge early here for the Australian side. And what a pass by Darge. Just great parabola right onto the stick of Kubara, and he just makes no mistake with that. Wow, parabola, yeah, landed right down where it needed to. Good old mathematical graph. They have done the calculations. Uh, <laughs> Putting it into practice, that is a student of the game. So we have a one goal lead early here for Australia. And again, they took the early lead last game as well, but New Zealand was able to fight back. Let's see if they can do the same here tonight. So that's Newmark looking to play it up. Man Warren throwing his body around, trying to catch Hayward Jones. And it's Lyndon Lodge with the puck. He'll throw it towards the net. Hasselman forced to play it here. We'll just leave it for Hayward Jones. He plays it up towards Polozov, just up off his stick. And now McGregor has it. Knocked out of the air nicely by Carini, and now he's racing for the puck. And Carini doing some good work on the forecheck. Centering feed was looking for Virasov, unable to control it. Instead, Kamazin gets it. His shot is deflected by Lane. And finally, the Ice Blacks are able to get it to mid-ice. Woodman battling on the far corner. Hits the skate of Carini, and it sends it back into the zone, but Bert Malloy recovers, and now he'll skate it himself. Now Virasov on the far side. Puts one towards the net, but Hasselman's able to see that from a sharp angle. Kind of stumbled a little bit Virasov as a, after he made that shot on net. Was able to recover himself before crashing into the boards. So that's good that he was maintaining his body balance on his skates because you never want to see a guy shoot the puck and then go down after a bit of a speed wobble. Faceoff won so cleanly there by Kamins and it actually cleared the zone. So Australia will have to start from their own end here and it's Jamie Woodman with the puck. Woodman up to Carini. He's trying to go cross ice. Hits a skate, but instead just slapped into the zone. Now a race for the puck. The defenseman, Woodman, able to get the puck. Puts it towards the net. Takes a funny hop. Scary moment there for Hasselman as Australia maintains control. And now Kamenzin, centering feed here, was looking for Carini. Instead it goes all the way up to Hazelhurst. He throws one towards the net. Hits a skate of Joyce. And Australia, looking crisp early, unable to make that last pass, though. Certainly where Australia's most comfortable looks like in the defensive zone of the Kiwis as they are back there now. Landa with the puck now, plays it to Todd, puts it towards the net, but a nice save there by Hasselman to direct that puck towards the corner. 
Australia buzzing around the net, looking for those one-timers much like they did last night. And there's another opportunity just under the stick of Taylor right in front of the goal mouth. Backdoor here and a big fan by Landa wanted that one-timer again backdoor. Played towards the net. A scary situation here as Hasselman's out of the net. And we have a mismatch in lines as the top line for Australia is feasting on this fourth line of the Ice Blacks. Now Todd throws one towards the net and wisely Hasselman's able to glove that and hold on. Yeah, Ozzy, looking like they've hit that uh, driver's seat button there as they are driving this bus right into the Kiwi zone, that is for sure. And the Kiwis needing a line change. Again, struggling to man manage and maintain that coverage inside the zone. They did a real good job to start this game, but it's starting to show a little bit of crack there, Joel, as the Aussies apply that pressure. So Regan has it now for the Ice Blacks. Skates away from Caruana and then played out to center ice. Darge gets it, he'll just throw it back in. Race for the puck here, Regan once again there. Tries to escape a chat, and instead it comes up to Kubara. Now played down though, nice play by Chalice to knock that out of the air. And now to the near side, it's Low. Low takes a big hit there. By As Bailey Kubara. Bailey Kubara, two big bodies going at it. Could have been a lot worse. Turn over here, there's a shot right on. Just a sneaky little backhander by Casey Kubara. That was going top cheddar if it wasn't for a 6-5 shoulder of Hasselman. Using that big body in the right position, having to make another high scoring quality save. So Kubara and Ellis fighting for it in the near zone. And now Strayer absorbs a check from Pataki. Puck still loose, finally taken by Ellis. Ellis plays it up top towards Hayward Jones. Throws it towards the net, deflected by Cox, looking for something to happen there. Instead, puts it over the glass. Yeah, he, his tip was there, but he managed to tip it just a little bit too far wide as Lowe gets it here and then is met by Bailey Kubara and two big bodies hitting each other there. But Australia regained puck possession and then turned the puck going back the other way. Seems to be happening an awful lot, Joel, in that neutral zone. And as we see here, Momentarily, the faceoff was going to be in. Oh, it is going back into the defensive zone of the Mighty Ruse. Andy Cox lining up to take that faceoff. So Kiwi's that, looking to get so on the offense. This is the new rule that was deflected out by Cox of the Ice Blacks, but mm, yet stays in this other zone. Faceoff was in the zone. Nonetheless, Man Warren coming in, but it looks like just outside was Shannon McGregor. A little too eager into the zone, the defenseman, maybe not joining the play quite as much up ahead of step. Well, you know, they, they are definitely sensing that they want to get on the front foot and get back on putting the pressure on the Kiwis, and they are comfortable in that attacking zone. Maybe just a little too um, overzealous in that instance, getting over the blue line too quickly, resulting in an offside. Sometimes you just want to show off the wheels a little too much. Listen to that right, Ian. <laughs> you got the tools, use them. Go to your strengths. So once again, starting from the New Zealand zone, they're able to get it out, but not easily. Australia doing a good job at both blue lines. Clogging that neutral zone really effectively, getting that puck back. So here's Manwari now. He's tried to play it down low, but he's met by Lane. Able to regain control of the puck. Now his centering feed is played to the corner by Hayward Jones. And he'll play it down low, but with no help, it's just Cox to get it for the Ice Blacks. Now over to Hayward Jones. He'll just flip it out. And again, not really a pass to anyone in particular, just trying to release some pressure. Yeah, get a line change. So they, they kind of put it in an area where there no, where wasn't any men. And they do turn that puck over again. And the Aussies have possession in behind their goal. So Australia starting from their own end. And it's played up towards Kieran Webster. Webster leaves it for Kamenzin. Now up top to Virasov. Virasov makes a move to dance around, puts it right on, and a big save by Hasselman. Hasselman in the right spot. He's just fairly low in his crease too, Joel, as um, he does make that save. Um, Burns was struggling to contain that large frame human that is his opposite battling hard though to get um, him out of the way so the goaltender can see that shot cleanly and Hasselman does that and makes the save. Hasselman one of the premier goaltenders in the NZIHL for that Sky City Stampede 
plays such good position and of course swallows those rebounds. But credit to Australia for getting that very nice goal early. And here comes the speed line. This is Eden brings it into the zone. Tries to get a shot, but that's blocked. And you're seeing a lot of the Ice Blacks taking long shots, just trying to get things on net with last night maybe trying to make that extra pass. So a bit of a change in tactics here for New Zealand. Yeah, you're not, that's right. So the, hopefully they, they can manage to get those shots getting through, but at the moment, the Australians are putting themselves in a good D position to stop that shot. And here comes Regan with some speed into the zone. Regan looking for a centering feed as Hazelhurst is on his back. He'll leave it for Orr. Orr now, he'll spin and play it down low towards Eden. Eden takes a big check there from Todd and it's Kieran Webster to collect and he'll play it up towards Virasov. Virasov into the zone, a little three on two here with Hazelhurst, puts it towards, hits a defender. Scary move there for Hazelman, but instead it's cleared out of the zone. Landa brings it in just on side. And just a giveaway here, big shot right on, but Hasselman forced to make a save he maybe was not intending to do. Again, the Aussies really reading the passing of the Kiwis, and they're taking advantage and intercepting them, going on attack. Oh, and they miss a one-time opportunity again. Kiwis going the other way. And here's Joyce into the zone. Puts one right on, but an easy skate save there by Smart. And it's into the near side. And Landa fighting for the puck with Ruddle. And now to the far side towards Taylor. He'll try to chip it off the wall and does. And it's Nichols back to collect as both teams getting a couple fresh legs out up back on the ice. Another neutral zone giveaway here but the Kiwis just not clicking so far in that neutral zone ice with getting the passes taken away by the Australians in good position. Not the guy you want to give it to either with Darge who had some speed. But that bouncing puck just over the stick of Pataki and they'll have to regroup from the neutral zone. So Pataki into the zone. Darge over to Kubra. Kubra tried to backhand it, but a bouncing puck was difficult to play. And he'll just push over Lane as the bodies are starting to fall here in Avondale. <laughs> but it's all good. Let's get, keep it going. That's a lot of physical play. You're not, not incorrect there, Joel. Nichols going back to collect. Takes a light bump. Jackson Lane now has it. And he'll play it up towards Pataki. Both teams trying to get something going here with a nice clean entry into the zone. As Chalice once again gets a stick on it. And now New Zealand will try to break it up. Instead, he'll just put it right on the goal. Bouncing puck, forcing Smart to get a glove on that. Quite a dangerous bounce. Sometimes they can find the back of the net. Kiwis countering. Nice play there by Strayer. Getting the wheels into it. He's always a pest yes. in that offensive zone. Able to force at least a face-off for New Zealand in that attacking end. As you see, Landa here goes on the back end, doesn't get it through. It's intercepted by Regan. He mishandles it, gives it right over to Cameron Todd, who takes it right to the net, getting a shot, almost a free shot, really. Sometimes called a free delivery. Not what you want to give away, though. So Cox will put it in deep behind the net. And that's Newmark. He'll play it over towards McGregor. Now to the near side, this is Tyler Kubra. And he'll just throw it to the far side. The cross ice dump. And that's Callum Burns trying to collect. He plays it dangerously towards his own net, but instead finds a stick of Kozak. And now Kozak going one on two. He'll just throw it in and chase himself. Forcing Smart to play it up the wall. And McGregor's able to chip it up, but just to low at center ice. The Kiwis did get good entry into the offensive zone there, but then it was returned right back out of the zone by the Aussies. And a little back and forth here to see who's going to come up with that puck possession. McGregor behind his own goal with Polozov to chase. Now up to Tyler Kubra. Up to Man Warren. Warren puts one right on. Save made there by Hasselman. But no attack, so we'll go the other way. As pulls off trying to put one towards the net. Instead, it goes right to Joe Orr in the near wall. He takes a big hit there from Virasov. And it's played up to neutral ice. Things a little bit more physical than last game. Yeah, I think uh, the guys have uh, really, I don't know if they've adjusted to that. Any delay in the air. And, and here's a turnover. Up. Burt Malloy with a backhand opportunity. Hits the stick of low. 
And Australia has been doing a good job of stepping up in those passing lanes and really have New Zealand on their back heels in their own zone. And here's Virasov looking towards Kieran Webster. Nice stick play there by Hasselman to get it out of the zone and try to relieve this constant pressure that the Aussies are putting on. Now played to the near bench. No one home, but Hazelhurst wins the race for the puck. Tries to play it off the wall, but Lane was able to get in front of him. Yeah, that's those 50-50 battles that uh, the Australians seem to be getting to a lot quicker than the Kiwis, and they certainly have a lot of that puck possession. Now here's Virasov. He'll throw it into the near corner. Land is the first one there as he fights for it with Regan. And then Landis steals it, tries to go back door, puck still loose, but Virasov is knocked off his feet by Joyce. And now in the far corner, Joyce and Landa. Pops out to Landa, centering feet towards Virasov, went through everybody and gets out of the zone. Now played up towards Landa, tried to find Todd, instead it goes to Taylor, he runs into Ruddle and played to the far side. Trying to find a back door here. Here's Taylor, but a skate save by Hasselman. And Regan just trying to exit the zone as once again we have a line mismatch that they've been trying to exploit here in this first period. So I guess that's good bench management by the Australian coaching staff. They are well aware of who the Kiwis have on their bench and um, that home change as well. They're um, using good ice management here. As they look to make a good stretch pass, but well read by Burns. And played to Chalice. Now another race for the puck here. It's Hazelhurst first man there. He'll play it to Kennedy. Kennedy up the wall to Darge and quick pass to Kubra and they're out of the zone. And back down low to Darge again. Tried to find Kubra, instead finds Burns. Was able to regain control of the puck. Centering feed here towards Kubra. Shot right on, a big save. Another opportunity and it's Casey Kubra, but he missed everything. Hasselman out of the net looking to cover that puck. Misses it, but the Kiwis recover and break it out of the zone momentarily. So this is tapping with it. He'll play it up the wall. He was just really not connecting with their passes here, Joel, and it's just sent right back to another stick, but for the other team. Here comes Kozak out of the bench with some fresh legs, but he's knocked down nicely by Pataki, and then Pataki with another hit. A double dose for him. Puck still free, putting a nice shot from his knees. Rebound still loose. A diving Pataki to keep it out. Another save, and it's still loose. Some good fight here from New Zealand. And a penalty going to be called here by the referee against the Australians. So the Kiwis with a good response, Joel. Um, seeing something here, the referee is going to be calling it as Kozak gets a great shot, but Smart gets that right arm up to block it. And the Aussies do touch the puck as number 17, Mackenzie Corona goes into the penalty box for two minutes, saying the Kiwis for their first power play in this Saturday night match. So a little bit of a spurt there from New Zealand, and they are rewarded for it with their first power play opportunity to the game with just 38 seconds remaining in this opening period. So two minutes hooking to Mac Caruana. And New Zealand will try to capitalize in the waning seconds of this opening period. That's Joe Orr. Two Aussies on his back. He'll leave it towards Lane. Great play there by Carini to keep that alive. Instead played down low to Eden. Now up top to Lane. Lane puts one on. Shot missed everything. And finally played up and out of the zone. Trying to move quick here is Eden. He throws one towards the net, but didn't get really much anything on it. And that will do it for our first period of play. Back and forth action, mostly in favor of the Australian Mighty Roos with that fantastic goal by Casey Kubera on the pass from Wahid Darge to give the Aussies that one goal lead early. Yeah, you don't miss much uh, there, Joel. And it is a 1-0 lead for the Australians. They have earned that goal. The Kiwis showing again a bit of fight back, but it's after they've been scored on. So they were put under pressure with a five on three to kill. 
within the first minute and a half of the game. So not the ideal start for the Kiwis. They will be certainly a little bit dejected on that start, but however, they were able to, to kill that off, gain a little bit of that momentum back, and get back to five-on-five five action. Since that's happened, though, Joel, it seems like the puck has just magnetically gone to the Australian sticks and kept away from the Kiwis. The Kiwis get it. They're sending it into open space. They're not getting it back. 50-50 battles. They're not winning that puck. Turnovers are really starting to hurt them, putting Hasselman under an awful lot of pressure. That pressure from Australia, as you mentioned, a big factor in that New Zealand end. But they have seen, again, some good goaltending from Joel Hasselman, who's had to make some big stops to keep this game just at 1-0. Again, it's something that the Kiwis are going to be a little bit reliant on is that goaltending because of this constant wave of attack and wave after attack and attack that the Aussies have. Their depth is really starting to show. You begin to wonder, as this series goes towards tomorrow, do the Kiwis have enough left in the tank to sustain that barrage of attack? Well, Australia certainly has that depth that is going to be hard to keep up with. And we'll see if they can do that here in the second. Yesterday, New Zealand did respond after dropping down early. Let's see if they can do it again here. Stick around. Second period action coming up soon.
Kyoto Koto Kato, welcome back to the Trans Tasman Challenge between the New Zealand Ice Blacks and the Australia Mighty Roos. I'm Joel Rindelob. Joining me is Ian Wanamaker, giving you all the action for this high intensity test. And boy, what have we seen in that first period? Yeah, well, we got a one nothing game in favor of the Mighty Roos. It didn't disappoint the Kiwis under pressure with a five on three power play. They had to give up and kill it off to minutes to sustain some of that pressure that's waves after wave after wave for the Australians. So let's see, what are the Kiwis gonna regroup with here in the second period at Paradise Botnik? Well, they're gonna start with their power play of their own, a little bit of a spurt towards the end there for New Zealand, getting some pressure on the goal, rewarded with that power play. So they're gonna have about a minute and a half or so to work with on that fresh ice. Again, beautiful opportunity for the Kiwis and a nice fresh sheet of ice as you mentioned, Joel. We want to see those players step up in these moments. Another one here presented for them. Let's see what they do with it. We'll see if they can respond like they did last night. But of course, Charlie Smart in goal has been up to the challenge so far early and especially good with his rebound control, which isn't letting New Zealand get in any of those second chance opportunities. Yeah, not a lot of high danger shots either. A lot of shots from the perimeter, which are a lot easier to stop than in that uh, danger area just outside the crease. So the Kiwi's going to have to get some pressure there and get on their horse. Second period underway here in Botany, home of the Botany Swarm of the New Zealand Ice Hockey League. And we're underway, played up towards Alice, just past him. Hazelhurst has that go through his skates, but set to him nicely by Smart. And now near side to find Landon. Now two on one opportunity here for Australia. Shorthanded shot to go! Cameron Todd puts it home and it's two nothing Australia. Shorthanded within the first 20 seconds of the second period. Wow, right away Australia getting what they want, nullifying any type of crowd response. Two nothing, mighty ruse. And there it is, not how the Ice Blacks wanted to respond, had a great opportunity to start the period on a power play, but instead we're going the other way. So well, I'm just surprised, just like you, I think most people in this building after witnessing that, not expecting to see that that quickly on the Kiwi power play, fans which they still have. Fans here, not even back to their seats yet, just in shock. As Australia shows their potency early, but of course, 45 seconds remaining on the power play. Now Darge collects it here for Australia. And you play it towards Pataki. He'll be able to buy some time in the near corner. And Darge doing some work before pulls off, can finally pull it off. But Pataki. There's gonna be a high stick call here. Sorry to interrupt you there, Joel, but the referee did see that high stick. Looks like Polozov, in that check that he was receiving from number five, Daniel Pataki, he got his stick right up in that facial area as he uh, is limbering a little bit, seeing there might be a little bit of blood on the ice. He might be cut in that facial area as he's going directly to the room to get some repairs. So we that could have a four minute power play here for the Australians. Nullify the power play opportunity for the Ice Blacks as Polozov exits with a high stick. So we'll play four on four here for 30 seconds before we get a three and a half minute power play for the Mighty Ruse. So that will be a double minor high sticking on Polozov. Yeah, any time there's a result of blood, uh, it's not something you want to see. Any players getting cut or injured or in that facial area, they, most of them are wearing half visors. I don't see, maybe with one exception on the Kiwi team, I think that's Alex Regan wearing a full facial protection that's uh, often known as a fishbowl, not a cage. So players do have that area of their face exposed, and um, at times when there are some high-speed collisions and sticks battling for pucks or getting up a little bit too high in that instance, Polozov was vic uh, not victim. He was uh, getting that stick up and um, catching his opponent so a bit to of the face. Open ice to play with here for both teams and some opportunity for Australia to put the gas to the floor. So that's Kubera. He'll have Darge with him. And now up top, that's Kennedy who shoots one over the glass. 
And Joyce will collect for New Zealand. Try to play that one up towards Ruddle, just in front of him. And he'll be doing battle with Darge. That is now a power play to the Australians as the Australian player does come out of the penalty box. And here's Bailey Kubra with a nice play. Centering feet towards Darge and a big save by Hasselman. Quite a nice read as he slid across to block that shot. Otherwise, that was an open dawning cage for Darge to throw that in the net. Again, this top unit for Australia is one to watch. They scored three goals between them and possibly had at least four or five, maybe six points as they are looking to go to work here with three minutes 17 in their power play for that double minor to pull this off. Here's Burt Malloy at the top of the point. He'll give it to Woodman. Woodman in the near corner now, trying to find a centering feed. Instead plays it back up top towards Corona. Little give and go to get it right back. And now cross eyes, trying to find Darge back door with a tic-tac-toe, unable to connect. Now played up top towards Malloy. Malloy towards the net, that's deflected, gets through, and Hasselman has to make the save. So the Australians looking to use behind the net here as well on this power play, using all facets and areas of the ice in the offensive zone for their power play as they work that puck around, looking to possibly change that high slot shot that there was uh, giving them success yesterday, Joel, with the one-timer, maybe looking to set something up a little bit differently. Face off one by the Ice Blacks, but good play by Landon to get in the face of Lane, and he's unable to clear. But a break here for the Ice Blacks as Australia sends it all the way down. Bit of a miscue on the pass. The defenseman was on the wall, wasn't in the middle of the um, in the ice to receive that pass. So Aussies get it back. They regroup, and they're coming up the ice on the power play. Here's Kennedy into the zone. He'll stop and collect. Play it to Hazelhurst up top. 1-2 back over to Landa. Landa throws one towards the net, but Hasselman had to make a skate save. And now played up top, and again an errant pass will give more breathing room for the Ice Blacks. As Bo Taylor miss cues on his pass, knows a little bit, oh, that was an off pass. They're going to have to regroup it here, possibly make a change, send out another unit for their power play. So the first of the double minors has been served by Polozov, and just two minutes remaining here on the power play for Australia with Virasov stopping behind the net. Now to cameras in. Malloy trying to find Webster, but that just pops off the stick of Camden's end and sent all the way down. Couple of miscues. This happened in the second period yesterday, Joel, as um, Australia not firing on all those cylinders right now, but a uh, couple of sloppy miscue passes, killing some time in this double minor penalty. And Virasov will bring it into the zone. Over towards Webster. Webster trying to go back door, but Camden's end was tied up nicely by Nichols. Now down low, that's Kamenzin. Up top to Woodman. Woodman skates towards, throws it on, and a goal! That deflects off Webster in front, and it's 3 nothing. Mighty Ruse. Not what the doctor ordered, Dr. Rindelob, and that is a deflection that is kind of haunting the Kiwis as they set up on the power play of the Mighty Ruse. Shot from Woodman at the point. Goes off a body, possibly off Webster, as Nichols... Looks a little dejected, possibly hitting him and redirecting into the cage. And that results in a, is it this, a 3-0 scoreline as they make that adjustment. Kiwis in a bit of a hole. Well, this is another thing we saw from Australia. Trying to get those bodies in front, put the pucks on net. Good things can happen, as we just saw. So they have capitalized on that high sticking from Polozov and now have a lot of room to work with here in the second period. Yeah, that will open this game right up as they've, as they've, got, they've taken all their opportunity that they've been given, having that double minor going on to the power play. And with their depth and their offensive capability, they are extremely dangerous. Kiwis on five on five are going to have to make, make something happen here and execute it. Execute is the name of the game. Face off here to the left of Smart. It'll be Joyce to take the draw of the Melbourne Ice. Going up against Kubara. 
who wins it cleanly to his brother, Bailey. Now played over to Pataki. And then back low towards Kubera again. And now that's Bailey up the ice. He'll bring it into the zone himself. A bit of a soft pressure here by New Zealand. Just giving Let them him in the, the zone. Line. Now Ruddle the other way for the Ice Blacks. He's ridden off the puck nicely by Darge. And it's Kubara to collect. Nice work by Ruddle here. Doing some mahi behind the net. Trying to get it towards Bortada. Instead, it's Bailey Kubara up towards Manwaring. Manwaring trying to go one on three here. Instead, throws it in the skate of Lane. And it's Regan who throws a body into him, but two of them still fighting for the puck. And it's Joyce. Plays it up to Regan. Now to Bortinov. Bortinov coming to the near side, but that's punched out of the air. And now McGregor trying to chase. He ties Regan up against the wall, but Bortinov's there to help out. And some good forechecking here as Tyler Kubera doing all the work himself. And that will be an icing, so some good pressure applied here by Australia to force that errant pass. So the New Zealand team was um, looking like they were, again, under pressure, but they had control of the puck and were able to get out of the zone, only to have it turned back into the zone by the Aussies. Unable to get it cleanly. Bit of a theme in these last two games. They haven't anything had been real clean or smooth in transition as the Aussies positioning themselves very well, not letting the Kiwis get through. So Todd with it for the ruse. Plays it up top towards Kennedy. Kennedy with a clapper towards the net and a deflection again by Landa. They're really making use of that distractions right in the slot area. And here's Bortinov. Tried to play that one up ice. And it's played over to Kennedy. Here's Carini. Now Todd into the zone. Over to Landa. Landa with some space. Back door trying to give a give and go with Todd. Just in front of him though. Another opportunity deflected. Still loose as Hasselman's been tested here in numbers. Quick and often. Here's Hazelhurst. He'll play it down low towards Virasov. Virasov. He's pestered from behind by Lane as Todd delivers a check on Chalice. And now Regan with a little bit of a time will try to go a long pass towards Ellis, unable to control it. And now Hazelhurst has it for the ruse. Hazelhurst trying to split the D. Puck is taken off him and played over to Kennedy. Here's Biryasov. And Kennedy from his own end. Finds Hazelhurst. Now over to Virasov and some great puck movement here. Gets Australia out of the zone. Looking for Webster on the back door, but he was tied up by Regan. And now it's Poles off the other way. Poles off with some speed, trying to get around Woodman. Unable to get the centering feed, but still collects the puck. Now Nichols plays it down low. Goes right in front, a scary moment there as Poles off was through the crease, but he did not see it. And now the other way, here's Virasov. Plays it over towards Malloy. He can't quite get a stick on it. And it's Kamenzin who plays it down low. Now Virasov doing a good job protecting the puck. Finds Malloy at the top. He elects not to shoot. He'll play it towards Woodman. Woodman takes a hit there from Orr. But Australia still controls the puck. Back door towards Kamenzin. Puts one right on blocker. Saved by Hasselman. He had to make a move there. Kiwis just can't get a hold of that puck or cleanly as the Australians are. Looks like this could be icing. Yes, it is. They hopefully will have possession of it now as it's going all the way down the other zone. A lot of good work in that sequence of play. Joel, you need to take a nice deep breath because that was a lot of action, a lot of calling going on. And again, a massive wave from the Australians. Wave after wave. The Kiwis did come down. Polozov does a great move on that outside. Driving wide. Nothing resulted from it. Puck went in front of the net, stick lift, back the other way. New Zealand is definitely going to have to try to capitalize on those opportunities because they have been few and far between thus far in this second game. So it'll be tapping on the far wall. And uh, he 
Darge steals it from him, forcing Hasselman to make a glove save. Yeah, this is, again, you're um, seeing the Kiwis can't be nonchalant here. They have to push the envelope forward. That if, they're, if they're sitting back or being a bit hesitant or tentative with the puck, Aussies are too quick and able to make a stick lift in the offensive zone, and Darge with another chance on net. And Darge with it has it again for Australia. Plays it to Kubara. Now to Bailey Kubara, puts one towards the net, but that deflects off Hayward Jones over the glass, and we get a whistle. So that faceoff will stay inside, regardless of who shot the puck and or what it hit, if it was uh, off a New Zealand player or the goaltender. This will be Cox and Kubara in the faceoff circle. Hayward Jones is the one that comes away with it. Over to Burns. Now up to Kozak at the wall. He plays it towards Cox. Able to get it out. And here come the Ice Blacks. Played to the near wall. Race for the puck. And Cox has the advantage. Now behind the net towards Kozak. Kozak pressured from Kubara. And a nice play by Kubara to take it from him. And just like that, Australia's out of the zone. Now Kubara with some speed. Gets around Hayward Jones. Tries a sharp angle shot, but Hasselman wasn't having any of that. And now the other opportunity as Pataki has it. He'll play it down towards Kubara. Pataki throws one towards the net, but that misses everything. And Karuana has it now for Australia. Kiwi's not able to get out of the zone right at that top of the blue line. And Looking like they shot, might pay for it. Darge in front. Still loose. And a great recovery there by Hasselman to clear away an open net, but we're getting a power play opportunity here for the Mighty Roos. So Kiwi's again feeling and under that pressure as the D here pass it around. Shot deflection. Darge has it in his body. Just whiffs on it. Misses. Puts it in front. Shot on. Save was made by Hasselman. But that, oh, the faceoff is coming all the way down into the Mighty Roos zone. So Joel, the power play will go to the Kiwis as the Australian is sitting in the penalty box so you'll have for to interference. Excuse me on that play. The penalty will actually go to number 17, Mac Caruana, for interference, giving the Ice Blacks a much needed opportunity here. But they have to be wary. The Aussies scored on the last power play that the Kiwis had. And there's an Speaking opportunity of which, wow. Hasselman couldn't handle a puck. And that was Newmark who got a great chance right in front of the net. So Australia, Definitely a bigger threat here on the power plays so far for both sides. Yeah, being a man down, that's not often said. Kiwi's really got to get it together here and put some shots on. They've only registered five total shots in this game, and we have played half of it already. So here's Lane with the puck. He'll bring it in himself, and he has some speed right behind the net. Plays it up top to Chalice. Now Eden on the near side. He has Tyler Kubara in front of him. Plays it to Orr. Follows off to Eden. Now up top to Chalice. Chalice. Backdoor opportunity, but Lane couldn't quite get much on it. Now Orr fighting for possession, and Smart will just hold on. Kiwi's generating a little bit of an attack push here, but uh, Chalice, Eden getting some good movement. Finally getting something onto the net. But Ozzy throwing the puck down on their penalty kill, knowing that there is no icing. Hasselman swinging a miss. And Newmark getting a golden chance here. Probably was a little bit surprised that that puck squared right out in front, getting a shot on net. So New Zealand's going to try to tighten things up here on this power play. As Strayer's centering feed went right into the skate of Cox. Break and away. now it's Carini the other way. Race for the puck. And it's met. Shot in a skate. Saved by Burns. Adding to his save percentage, saving a goal for the Ice Blacks. Hasselman came out of the net there, and he's lost his stick in the process as well, Joel. So he's currently standing with no stick. And Webster centering feed. And it looks like we might have an offsides and a break for the Ice Blacks as nothing is going right for them so far on this power play. And the Kiwis are elected to make a goaltending change as they give away the puck in the offensive zone, allowing... Carini to escape on a breakaway, just avoids the goaltender as he comes out and he has a backhand shot on the goal and Burns plays it with a skate to stop it as Hasselman has just been substituted for Chuba 
Kirskos Mangos coming in off the bench. Looking for any type of spark here to ignite the Kiwi team. Interesting goaltender change with two goalies. Maybe they're just trying to split game time 50-50 as we have reached the half point of the second period and the half point of this three-game test. Nonetheless, interesting time to do it. Yes, uh, we'll see how that pans out as that is the referee's got the hand up as the man out of the box. He's just come out of the box and touched the puck. And we and might need to see a hand. replay on this as they are saying perhaps Matt Matt Corona did not establish himself with two feet coming out of the box to play the puck, which would be another two-minute penalty. Well, the um, penalty box officials released him from the penalty box, but if you do look back on that replay and he comes out of there with one foot down and not having two skates on, is that the ruling, Joel? You have the, to have two footing. The rule is you must have two, two skates, skates on the ice before, before you play the puck. playing the puck. And the referee is saying that did not happen. So he'll go right back in the box in a two-minute advantage here for the Ice Blacks who once again catch a break. So they got on the power play. and Let's see if they can go to work here. But the Aussies winning a faceoff, sending it right back down, killing time off that clock. So Lane to chase an aggressive forecheck there by the defenseman Hazelhurst, and he will retreat and let New Zealand set up behind their own goal. So here's Eden with plenty of ice, decides to take his time and start once again behind his own goal. So the Ice Blacks will try again. And it's played up towards Orr. Orr tried to leave it back, but well read by Kubara to break that one up. So Eden will once again retreat and try again. Eden just throws it into the far corner. Kennedy's the first man there. Plays it up the wall towards Darge, and he is able to clear the zone. Just this is simple stuff, Joel. I mean, uh, if you're dumping the puck on a power play, you can tell that they are out of sorts and not clicking. They've got to get the passing on the tape, gain entry into the zone as they're trying here. A little bit impeded, but Ozzy straight back away. So here's Taylor on the penalty kill. Tried to bank one off Chaba. Instead, it comes out to the zone, and Woodman tries to play it deeper. But instead, it's Chalice for the Ike Blacks. Plays it up towards Kozak. That's in front of him. So taken and thrown all the way down by Dodd. Burns stops up, avoids the quick, hard forecheck. But again, the Kiwis forced to retreat into their own zone. Less again on the power play. Then 30 seconds remaining on this power play. And so far, nothing to show for it. Not even a shot on goal for the Ice Blacks. Here's Burns trying to correct that. But instead, it's blocked by Todd. Captain in the zone by Kozak. Now over to Burns again. Now to Strayer on the near side. Centering feed for Ellis puts one through, but that one is saved just off the side netting. When we get a whistle here. A little bit quick on that whistle. I'm not sure entirely why the referee's blown that because the puck was still live and in play. Nevertheless, we are going to have a faceoff inside of the zone with six seconds remaining on the New Zealand power play. Almost a gift for them. So it'll be Cox to take the draw for the Ice Blacks. But that's won nicely by Newmark. And then finally cleared the length of the ice by Manwaring. So a race for the pockets, Burns. He'll leave it for Strayer. Strayer has all day here. As the Australia Mighty Ruse recollects just coming off of that penalty kill. And now Strayer has it again. Tries to find Kozak, but that's behind him. So Newmark will take possession. And Virasov up towards Manwarin. And that's thrown into the netting, so we get a whistle and some fresh legs on the ice for both squads. So Australia will be pleased with that penalty kill. They um, executed that very well. They had to kill another penalty on top of the original. So a, a four minute period of play. They still have a three goal lead here with six minutes, 14 seconds remaining. And as you mentioned, Joel, like the Kiwis not getting a lot of shots. They didn't register one shot with four minutes of extra attacker on the ice for a power play. And the best opportunity was from Tim Newmark on the PK. And he happens to play on which team? That would be the Australia Mighty Ruzian. Okay, just double checking there to make sure we got those facts correct. 
Men in Black really needing a little bit of a regroup here. And they're not going to get any time off as they have been sent off for what looks like a delay a game penalty after a bit of a conversation. So that was in the neutral zone and possibly the puck shot directly over the glass. Well, they said the call. puck was shot just inside the zone. Oh, so they were the inside zone. the zone. So that's why they were discussing because it was not neutral zone territory. So that will be the delay a game call. And by the rule book, it gives the Australia Mighty Roos two more minutes to work with in the power play situation. So here's Birasov. Looking for time. Webster possibly in that high slot. He'll go towards Kubera. Kubera actually hits the skate of Webster. And now Birasov again, biding his time, elects to go down low towards Kamenzin. Kamenzin looking for an opening. Birasov. Tried for a little one-two pass as Pataki is in front. And now it's Kubera over to Kamenzin. Kamenzin with an opportunity, takes a clapper, but Lowe got a piece of that one. And now Virasov up top towards Kubara. And now Kamenzin on the near side. Kubara at the point, throws one through, but hits the stick of the defender, Ruddle. Cleared, but not out. Now Bailey Kubra walks right in, tries to go blocker side. Huge save there by Chaba. And now it's Devlin the other way. Devlin looking for Ruddle. Knocks that out of midair, but can't direct it towards the net. The referee does have the arm up for another penalty call here. And it looks like it's going to go against the Australians. That's Pataki, number five. Goes straight to the box. He's call is being made. A two minutes for holding the holding stick. Holding the stick, okay. So that puts the puts it to a four on four situation, Joel, with um, 35 seconds remaining in that delay of game penalty to New Zealand. So it'll be four on four for 35 seconds and then a, an abbreviated power play for the Ice Blacks, which they desperately need to get something going in the offensive zone. And offside here, as Burt Malloy could not get back and touch up at the blue line, so a faceoff will be just outside of the ice black zone. They might need to stretch that uh, those hamstrings as he put a an excellent attempt to negate that offside. But man, game of inches that was close. Burt Malloy, of course, the veteran, 36-year-old for the Australian. He's, he's stretched that muscle out once or twice on this ice sheet. He has played an awful lot of games and represented his country very well and proudly, serving a long time and now rewarding that service as an assistant captaincy. He is the captain. Captain, excuse me. Straight up captain. Captaincy, straight up captaincy, Malloy. yeah. There's See, when we're not as familiar Whitman. with these players, what a shot. And a save made by Chaba. And again, I guess uh, for our viewers, we don't get the luxury of seeing these Australians that often, so we're not as familiar with them. However, that man does lead, and he leads by example. And speaking of leads, it is a lead to the Mighty Roos. They have three goals. The Kiwis have a goose egg. That is a zero on the scoreboard, and the Kiwis have a power play in one second. So minute 24 of power play action here as they need to get something going. Hopefully maybe get a goal before the end of the period. Get some momentum in the third if they want to stay in this game. So Chalice will dump it in. Australia has done such a good job of meeting New Zealand at their own blue line, forcing those turnovers or those dump ins so they can't just walk into the zone and set up. And once again, a turnover at the blue. Australia gains control and is able to burn off some valuable seconds of this power play. It's like they've watched yesterday's game tape and they've made the necessary adjustments to counter this Kiwi team. And the Kiwis so far don't have the response that they are looking for. And finally played into the zone and Orr will have it. He's pressured by Kennedy. And now it's Polozov with a little bit of spinorama. Able to regain control of the puck, but some good pressure here by Australia. Collapsing and winning these races to the puck. 
That's 50-50 battles, Joel, and it's that desire that you want to get that puck and get it Here's back. Here's a turnover. Tried to find Eden. No opportunity there for New Zealand. A little bit of sloppy work. Now pulls off from the sharp angle. Trying to find Chalice, but a bouncing puck. Unable to control it. And just like that, we're back to five-on-five five hockey as Pataki is out of the box. And zero shots on the power play. Kozak loses control, so New Zealand will have to regroup from center ice as Cox touches up at the blue. And it's Regan with the puck now. Nice play by Newmark to meet him in the far corner. Now Newmark and Pataki tried to work on it. Turn over here, still loose. Kozov tries to put it in, but a nice save there by Smart to hold on. So a bit of give and go from Eden and Kozak. Uh, some decent work along the wall, but just coming up short. They just don't seem to have that answer that uh, they're looking for, the Kiwis, who will want to see this period, two minutes 16, hopefully with something to say for it on that scoreboard. And there's a shot by Strayer that missed everything. Race to the puck here as Man Warren able to get a stick on it. Plays it up towards K Tyler Kubara. Now Kubara trying to go one on two. Unable to get around Regan, and now Kozak has it. Kozak trying to buy some time. Accidentally puts it towards the net. Forcing Chava to put a stick on it. Now Regan has it. He's trying to go up towards Strayer. The best he can do is just chip it out towards Woodman. Now Woodman will just flip it up in the air for Regan to collect. He plays it up the wall towards Strayer. Now Strayer cross ice finds Nichols. Nichols with a little bit of room. He'll just throw it towards the net. And Australia regroup from their own end. That's Newmark with it. Trying to go up ice. Able to hit the stick of man warring, but he can't control. And near side, it's Ellis. Ellis plays it back towards Hayward Jones. Now far side towards Chalice. He's looking for Henderson, who actually had a break between the deep and a great play by Newmark to break that up. Now, nice play by Kamens in to steal the puck. Centering feed got through everyone. Virasov was trying to poach one from the slot. Now, Kubara kicks it up to Carini. Carini right in, and he misses up over the net. Great opportunity for Carini. the youngster Carini. Now the far side, Hayward Jones. He'll play it off the glass. Little sloppy play with the puck. And now Ellis. Ellis with a little bit of space. Tries to get around Pataki. Puts one through, but a blocker saved by Smart. He seems to be there when they need him. Now race for the puck. It's Hayward Jones, but Virasov is able to beat him there. Once again, winning those key races to the puck. Now loose in front, still loose, plays it up to Kennedy with a blast. Now Hazelhurst on the near side. Finds Kennedy again, just under his stick. Now Kennedy with some time. Down low, centering feed here, looking for Taylor. And that will do it for the end of the second. After two periods of play, it is three to nothing, Australia. And it's been a lot of Australia in this period. As the Kiwis here, they managed that the Australians turn it over, pass over to Ellis. Ellis elects to go around the D, gets a shot on net, block it away by Smart. Smart has been there. He has stood tall to everything the Ice Blacks have thrown at him. And quite frankly, he's made it look easy. Yeah, well, the, to, to be fair as well, he, they haven't thrown an awful lot at him. That's six shots. Six shots out of two periods of play, and how many power plays? Was that three on our count? At least with four minutes consecutive in a row, two penalties. Zero shots, Joel. That's not going to get it done. Absolutely not for the Ice Blacks. And if you're an Australia fan, maybe you don't want to see some of these uncharacteristic penalties that they have been taken. But to their credit, their penalty kill has looked phenomenal. Yeah, they've bailed them out of any of those situations that they created for themselves. However, the Kiwis dug a deeper hole when they that hole is a four-minute double minor. The Australians capitalized. They certainly did, and they even got that shorthanded goal, which was an absolute killer to start the period and set the tone early that this was going to be theirs. So a one nothing after first period of play. 
the Aussies got two in that frame. Now it's 3 nothing for the Aussies. Kiwis really need a rebound here. They got to get something going real quickly. Possibly a decent start, something to go right on the attack. Because a 3 nothing lead sometimes is referred to as the unsafest lead in hockey. However, they really got to push if they want to make that effort. And effort is one of those key words I've been using yesterday and today. They got to show the desire, that want to get the puck to get something going to create those chances and opportunities because they are few and far between and the goaltending has been outstanding for Australia. Well, as we saw last night though, goals can come quick. They can come in a hurry. The Ice Blacks were able to tuck away two in a span of 36 seconds. So it can be done, but as you mentioned, they're gonna have to strap in and put in that effort to win those races to the pucks and crash that net if they want something good to happen. And they're up against a quality opponent. So when you uh, want something big and if you're in it to win it, you got to start showing up and that's when they need it the most. So stay tuned folks as we take a short break here inside the second period of play. Third period action coming up next.
Kia ora whanau. Whanau. Welcome back. There we are. We're all trying to get things in sync. Hopefully the New Zealand team is able to do so here. Get things in track and in line because they are down three goals to none here, Joel, and they're looking for something, some kind of spark, something they need to do. But there's a lot of things they can work on to get things done here to recap and get back in this game. Well, it's going to be a difficult sledding trip because Australia has been raining down on them, making it as difficult as possible to get any traction going. It has been Australia in the offensive zone, Australia in the defensive zone, and of course, neutral ice has been owned by Australia at each blue line, making things difficult for New Zealand to really even just advance the puck. So they've really, the Australians, that's who we're referring to, have outworked the Kiwis in all aspects of the game for 40 minutes out of that time, even on their own penalty kill. So that's something that the Kiwis, again, really got to identify in their game and say, hey, what are we playing here for? What's this purpose? I mean, look at the rankings in the world. The Kiwis are not so far behind the Aussies. I believe we sit around 36th in the world. 36 for Australia and we are 40 42nd in the world so there is a little bit of a difference there however there is an Olympic ranking system that takes place and a lot of the teams in Europe North America are able to play and get that qualification points so we are underway here in the third New Zealand trying to get back in this and remember three goals not too big of a lead in ice hockey things can change quickly and that's exactly what New Zealand is hoping is going to happen. Instead, we have another chance here. Shot just grazes by Chaba. There's another opportunity there for Caruana. And the Aussies have picked up right where they left off. It's Kubara now trying to go down low towards Dodge. Low trying to go off the glass. Just puts it off the glass, but intercepted by Aussie. And Dodge in behind the net now. Center feed. Finally, New Zealand away. is able to break up that pass to the slot as Kozak just got a stick on it. And they're finally starting to pick up on things. Here is a shot right on by Kubara, forcing Chopper to make a save. Now Pataki with a clapper. Rebound still loose as Kubara hits the side of the net. And three good opportunities there for Australia. First minute of this third period, and it's been relentless attack by the Australians. And here comes Burns. He got caught up. And a good opportunity for Kubara going back. Door shot and go! Wahib Darge makes it four. Kiwis just not having the answer. Australia in full control here. In Tamaki Makoto as they Burns unable to get that puck out of the zone in Australia. Keep it in. Sensing blood here. The Aussies pass it over. One time shot. Not all of it. But Darge finishes that off with another goal to this highly offensive machine that is Australia and that power play unit of their first line. So another turnover at the blue line coming back to bite New Zealand. And again, a quick start to a period for Australia. And, and they're rewarded for it. They started really well in both periods. First, second, now in the third. And they are getting what they are after, playing again. Almost the perfect road game. Chalice has it now for the Ice Blacks. Plays it over to his teammate in West Auckland, Flynn Hayward Jones. But again, not much of a structure there on that breakout pass, and it sails all the way down for an icing. So it seems that we are running out of the things to say. The Kiwis, I believe they know what to do. It's just they are the ones that are having to put it into practice and execute it. Something's going to have to break for them, but the Australians looking sharp here. That is for sure. So we're going to have to redo the faceoff here as Nick Henderson entered the circle wee early. And here's Landa trying to get something, but Lane was poke checking him. Now there's a shot, big save there by sliding Chaba as the puck found the stick of Bo Taylor back door. Now Chrysos, that's Landa. Landa still with possession, trying to find Kennedy. But instead, Ruddle has it. He's ridden off the puck, but only momentarily. And then he collides with Hazelhurst, but loses the twig. And Kennedy has it. 
Ruddle from behind tries to take him up. And the puck comes to Landa. Now Kennedy plays it behind the net. Hazelhurst will keep it going with the momentum. Up to Landa. Now Landa over the blue. Puts one right on and a big glove save by Chaba as that had some pace on it. Yeah, Landa, big man, can really lean and shoot on that, shoot the puck as he took on two Kiwi defenders there confidently as Australia. That's another word we can use for them. They are playing with an awful lot of confidence because they're sitting with that four-goal cushion right now, firing on 29 shots to both goaltenders for the Kiwi team. So played back behind for Regan. Regan with some open ice. He'll skate it himself. Now plays it up towards Ruddle. Wasn't expecting that pass, and it goes all the way to Lodge. Now played up the wall. Manwaring was just able to get a stick on it to get it out of the zone. And then that's taken off him by Nichols. Now Manwaring plays it from his feet up to Kubara. Centering feet here for Newmark. Newmark, oh, and he shot. Oh, and a big save by Chaba. Rebound, another chance. And a huge stop there by Regan to stuff Tyler Cooper uh, in the slot. Otherwise, that could have been a fifth. As Newmark got it all alone. Great move, good save. But they are not out of it yet, the Kiwis, as they put the pressure right back on them. Continuous from the Australians. Now Kozak has it. One He's on five. He's taken down. This is going to be another power play for the Ice Blacks as Kozak was tripped up in the neutral zone. It looked like Newmark was right at the end of his shift, and he takes down Kozak. I'm sorry, they are giving that penalty to Manwaring. So Ruddle, oh, we have gone away from that replay. So we go all the way back to the Australian zone. The Kiwis on the power play. I think it's the fourth of the evening here, Joel. And Looking to get something going. Yet a shot to show for it. And unable to keep it in the zone. So once again, the Kiwis will be on the power play starting from their own end. So the captain, Cox, will collect. Plays it back for Kozak. Now up to Ellis. Ellis is pressured from Burt Malloy, and he loses possession of the puck. And it's back to Burns. Let's see if the Kiwis can crack this forecheck. They've had plenty of looks at it tonight. Yes. Yes, indeed, they have as they mount the offensive attack from their D zone. Burns with it now. And once again, some great play by Australia at the blue line to break up that momentum. And it's Kozak who has to try things from his own blue line. That's taken off him from Malloy, and he plays it back into the zone. It just seems that the teams are playing two different games here, Joel. The Kiwis really struggling, not getting any rhythm to their game, and Australia firing in all cylinders. So here's Polozov who brings it in, going coast to coast here with some nifty moves. Finally getting it into the zone for the Kiwis. And then a two-on-one collapse here as Jamie Woodman plays it up the ice, trying to find Pinarini. And a great opportunity there. Interesting play as Joe Orr lost his bucket over the glass. It's stuck in between the stanchion. He came right off. The referee elected to keep play continuing as the puck wasn't in his vicinity. So that helmet, which I've not seen before in hockey, is lodged in between the stanchion as play continues. I still can't even spot it from my angle. I've never seen that before. So we have a loose lid that has finally been recovered. But nonetheless, not much doing on the power play for New Zealand. Here's Kahu Joyce into the zone. Centering feed. That's blocked. Down low towards Polozov. And now Polozov has it. Has Joyce to help. But instead it's Kennedy who pushes him off the puck. And Kennedy once again avoids a check from Joyce, but not from Polozov. And that's dislodged that helmet. It's come into play now on the ice, not wedged on the stanchion. So we finally got that loose helmet free. But there's a loose stick down in the zone as well. So we got equipment flying everywhere here, folks. And there's a centering feed that's broken up nicely by Todd. 
And now two on one the other way. It's Manwaring. Manwaring with a shot right on. Rebounds loose for a moment. Still free as Chaba pushes it into the corner. And Taylor's the one with it. Centering feed here looking for Newmark. Can't connect. Now play it up towards Regan. Regan with the breakaway. Oh, hello. Regan shoots it. Oh, sorry, boy, smart. Great opportunity there for the Ice Blacks, and they're going to get a power play. play. A penalty, yeah, called against the Ruse. Regan still with the puck as he's skated up and down the ice by himself. And finally, as Australia touches up, we get the whistle. As there is gear everywhere, and we need to do a whole sweep. Here. They got a sweep, the cl yeah, cle clean sweep of the ice. They got sticks in one end, sticks in the other. Errant bucket, as you see a Kiwi get pushed over, and then another Kiwi pushed over by the Aussies. They collide, they fall down, and then another Aussie goes down. Just a whole sequence of events that were all really unfortunate. Demonstrating a little bit of unstructured play. But that's caused the Australians to get out of that structure a little bit here as number 11, Lyndon Lodge, he goes into the box for two minutes. So the yard sale has been cleaned up and a result will be a two minute power play for the New Zealand Ice Blacks as Lyndon Lodge will sit for two minutes on that hook. And Kozak has it here, up to Burns at the top. Now Strayer and Burns working back and forth. Sloppy play with the puck, but Strayer's able to get it back and he'll decide to skate it. Plays it up towards Burns as the defender loses his stick. That's Webster who had it slashed from his hands. Able to get it back though. Now Strayer with a centering feed. Can't get it past Smart and it's cleared all the way down. So again, the Kiwi's not able to capitalize on an errant stick. They actually had, um, with the man advantage, almost like a five on three there as the man didn't have a stick. He couldn't play the puck. But now that's all regrouped and back into five on four. One thing Australia is doing really well here is whenever New Zealand gets into the zone, they're doing an aggressive attack on the PK. Two guys on one ice black outnumbering them, collecting that puck and able to clear the zone. This was a good pass there. They were looking as Ruddle gets in behind both defenders, having a big stretch pass, getting him right behind the Australian defenders. However, it's been sent right back down the ice for the Kiwis to regroup. New Zealand really does need at this point to just get more men on the puck. They have more of them on the ice in the power play, but they're not using them. Yeah, got to let that puck do the work for them, Joel. And on the power play, they've got to support the man with the puck, put themselves in a position to allow the pass to occur, to get things moving, to put pressure on the Aussies. They should not be able to pressure you when they have less men on the ice and theoretically less room to work with. It's like they have a rod and they're using it for their own back. And now we've got a face-off down in the Kiwi zone. Looks like with all of this kerfuffle and confusion on the ice, the Ice Blacks themselves might have got mixed up and had a too many men on the ice penalty. So just like that, we are back to four on four hockey as Devlin will serve the bench minor for the Ice Blacks. So not something New Zealand was hoping to do, it to squander another opportunity. And instead it will be Darj and Polozov going to work in the far corner. Great work by both of them. And played up top to Pataki. Pataki down low, trying to find Darge again. But he's met by Lane. And again, doing some good work in the corners. And it's Kubara. Now Pataki, he'll skate it down low himself. Takes a bit of a hit there. And then played over to Kubara. Bailey Kubara tried to find Pataki skating through the crease. And now played up top towards Eden. Broken up by Casey Kubara, and he'll bring it into the zone. Now here's Casey Kubara putting on the brakes, and he'll just take it out himself and regroup because he didn't like what he saw as the Australians try to get a clean entry into the zone. And it's Kubara now with low on his back, and that's Landa. 
up to Kennedy. Kennedy fakes a shot back to Landa, trying to find a crease in this power play. Now a shot goes right through, and a save made by Chaba. So the Australians still have 40 seconds remaining on their power play. Um, sitting on a 4-0 lead with 10 minutes, 19 seconds remaining in this third period. Shot count 31, Australia, 7 to the Kiwis. So we have 40 seconds remaining on this man advantage for Australia, and that's Kennedy who will run the power play from the top of the point. Over to Landa, throws one towards the net, actually hit Todd. Did not get through, and New Zealand able to clear. At this point in the game, Joel, you wonder what the Kiwis can do because if this continues and if the further it gets out of reach, they might need to try something that is different. Centering feed there, big save by Chaba, as again, have to make a save on Taylor from the slot. And that hasn't been different. That's been a theme of this game as Australia break over the line, get around the defenseman, putting him out of position, putting that pass in the middle, one-time shot, good covering by Chaba, not allowing any rebound because that could be a goal against them. Once again, leaning on the goaltending is New Zealand. So power play about to expire here. So we're back to five on five. Devlin now out of the box. And played down low. That's Casey, or excuse me, Tyler Kubara. Working things down low, and now back out to center ice. I'm sure the Kiwi audience may forgive you, Joel. There are three Kubaras to select from. All making their impact in this series so far. You're not. As that is Tyler Kubara trying to throw one towards the net. And here's Linden Lodge. A big F1 fan, if you can believe it, is Linden Lodge. Centering feed here. Shot just wide, that was Tyler Kubara. Linden Lodge, also a Blackhawks and Patrick Kane fan. How do you think he feels about that trade to New York? Ooh, he's long time serving to that organization, but that Blackhawks organization, not sure about you, Joel, is in a little bit of turmoil. And you wonder about uh, Captain Sirius as well, jo uh, Jonathan Taves, if he's gonna be lasting there or if he's gonna get traded away currently on uh, injured reserve. As the Aussies here, just again, Winning those 50-50 battles, pass in front of the net. Another pass, shot, just missing the net. <laughs> like the Kiwis weren't even there. So it remains a four goal advantage for the Mighty Ruse. New Zealand, only seven shots thus far, 50 plus minutes into this one. And not really a good scoring chance to show for it. Here's a scoring chance. Taken away nicely by Cox. Good defensive play there to negate that scoring chance. And still not out of the zone yet. That could be a trip. No, it play on. I think that, that might have been a trip in a closer game, but yes. not with four goal lead. Mm. So we play on as Strayer has it for the Ice Blacks, trying to play it up towards Cox. But Malloy's there to meet it, and it's Kamen's in. That plays it up to Woodman. Woodman, the fleet-footed defenseman trying to get in on the action. And instead, now we have Regan. Regan plays it up the wall. Gets it past Malloy and up to Kozak. Now Kozak's looking for a feed. Puts it right on, but smart in great position again to make that save. Yeah, it's an odd man rush, though. Good creating an opportunity for himself is Regan with that very quick, smooth skating stride. Manages to get up the wall. Gets in the zone, gives it to Kozak. Kozak with a shot. Something positive for the Kiwis. A shot on goal. Yes, well, they got to build on something here, and that's one thing, if anything. Right now, it's 7 minutes, 49 seconds, are remaining in this third period. So it'll be Orr to take the draw to the right of Smart. And here comes Australia. Just able to get it out of the zone, but Orr is able to get it. Now he takes it towards the net. Plays it right to Joyce, who put one towards the net, and Smart's able to get a stick on it. And now it's left for Karuana. 
And he's got some speed. And a little give and go here between Kubara and Darge, the two CBR teammates. Darge still with possession. Up top to Patak, he throws one right on, but Chaba saw that one all the way. You can definitely see the chemistry between uh, Rahibi Darge there and Kubara. As we get a shot here as the Kiwis turn it over and they get it, Joe Orr taking on two defensemen, makes a nice move, goes down all by himself, and then Kahu Joyce gets a shot, a bit of a weak one, steered away safely by Charlie Smart. The ever-vigilant Charlie Smart all over that again for his ninth save in as many opportunities. So Australia will start from their own end. This is Bailey Kubara. He goes cross ice. This is Darge trying to get a step around Nickel. Centering feed there alone. Oh, what a save by Chaba. Because he was able to get a toe on that one. Now Hazelhurst from a sharp angle. Puts it on in another save. Chaba without a stick. Danger here for the Ice Blacks. He even lost his blocker in that process, managed to pick it up himself and regain his stick in that time. Another chance there as Caruana got a deflection on it, but that just sails wide. Now Hazelhurst to the center of the ice. He puts one through and hits the skate of Nichols, and it's Caruana the first one to collect. His backhander towards the slot is swept away by Tappen, and now up to Ellis into the zone. Ellis puts a long shot on. Rebound comes towards Joyce, but Hazelhurst able to chip that away. And now still playing in front of the Australian bench. Comes over to Ellis. There's a shot right on. Big save there by Smart. And another opportunity here as Smart has been tested for a couple times. And now a centering feed here, but no one home in Australia able to clear the zone. And that's right on to Chaba, so there's no icing as the Kiwis coming right back up the ice. Good breakout here, probably one of their best ones so far in the game. But again, thwarted by Australia's defense, and they turn the puck over. Now here's McGregor who plays that one up towards Taylor. Taylor into the zone, able to find Newmark. Newmark puts it through, but that actually went off the stick of Cox and sailed wide. Now it's Landa with possession. Two ice blacks on his back, but he's still able to maintain. Centering feed was looking for Kubara, but couldn't get through. Still some great puck possession here by Landa, it working both corners before the ice blacks can finally clear. Four minutes, 52 seconds left in this game. Kiwi's looking to get on that scoreboard. That's going to be an offside as there was a bit of a collision. And Australia touched it up, and the puck, or the play is called. Coming back outside the Kiwi zone. So, Joel, four minutes 45. Kiwis here, got nine shots, ten shots on net. Four-nothing game. Is there anything more that they can do? There's certainly a lot that we've discussed. They need to finish this with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of passion, a little bit of heart. Yes, a little bit of determination, like to show that there's still some fight in the dog, that they are in it for the next game as well. If you're the Ice Blacks, you want something positive going into the third test. So if they can scrape by, maybe put in a goal or two and really give these fans something to cheer about. This is a sold out capacity crowd who have had nothing to cheer about so far. There's Nichols a shot right on, but once again, Smart is there. Yeah, but that's not a challenging shot. Like Nichols is there, he had a good opportunity, could have walked in, not the most heated like, not a lot of sauce on it, not a lot of pepper. Like, you know, it just seems a little bit deflating. Like, they have already been defeated. They need to show some of that desire and that effort here to finish strong, finish with some of that pride, because they can, and they should. Nice play there by Woodman to clear it out. It goes up to Birasov. Now Woodman skating hard towards the net. Here's Kieran Webster. Webster puts it through and a goal! Kieran Webster sneaks it in and now it's a five goal lead. We call that a bit of an accident dangle as he doesn't look like he wants to shoot this puck and it comes off the heel of his stick. Let's get another look at it here. Ozzy getting over the line, stopping up, looking for support, hitting that high man in the slot. 
looking for the shot. He looks to pass it. It doesn't go. He, like, changed his mind mid-pass, and it trickles right between the legs of Chaba. Maybe a bit of hockey karma from yesterday's own goal. But nevertheless, it's a 5-0 hockey game to the Mighty Roos from Australia. And that's why it's a never a bad idea to put it towards the goal because you know what? Sometimes it goes in. And it has gone in five times thus far for Australia who have looked the part every step of the way. Yeah, perhaps, Joel, then, I don't know, maybe you want to look at it another way with Australia, their league, and they played already and have started their games. So they have already got into this competition and that competitive mode, whereas the Kiwis have not started their league. You can see they are not up to the level they need to be yet, and it's going to take them some time. However, they've already played one game. This is the second of two international tests. Tomorrow, another one. That is true. New Zealand not even really doing much of a training camp yet very early in their season as they are really just preparing even for the world championships coming up if you are an australia fan of course you're going to like what you see coming up into these upcoming world championships so we get a bit of a discussion here too joel as Pate oh pataki's going to go to the box he got hit and went down on top of the puck and he shielded it somehow with his body i'm not sure if he put a hand on it maybe that's why he's going to the penalty box but the Aussies were uh, potentially making an argument to say, hey, your man's hitting our man when he's on the, on, the, on the ice. He's vulnerable in that position. However, the Kiwis, again, getting a power play. So a late opportunity here for New Zealand to try to get something on the board. But once again, as I've said, all power plays long, Australia clears the zone. And still, they are dangerous with four against the Kiwis five. So watch to see how they play this one. Kiwis gain the zone here. Cox takes one on two. Again, two Australian players collapse on one New Zealander. There is no support there and a quick clear of the zone. Again, that's not anything too more difficult as to have someone else to pass to when you get against two men. Big collision there as Ellis and Hazelhurst collide. Hazelhurst, a bit of a, a bit of a character out there. Definitely a good team guy. And did you know that he actually started a sustainable timber business with Kieran Webster? Yeah, he uh, sounds like he's doing pretty well for himself and Mr. Webster. So a good initiative that came right out of the COVID time. And of course, Hazelhurst, if you catch him in the woods, might catch him barefoot playing the harmonica, enjoying the nature. Well, there you go. That is something you did not know every day. And here's a chance for Eden into the zone, but Perini brings him down. No call on that one as the crowd sends a few cheers. And now McGregor will play it up the wall. And cleared out of the zone. It took the words out of your mouth. Sorry, Joel. Like it just was, I knew you were going to say it. You probably are tired of saying it. I don't know. I, I have reached my limit, so thank you for stepping in. As once again, Australia. Clear the zone. <laughs> there you are. And they're first on the puck. Which should never happen on the penalty kill. But here we are. We're just calling it as we see it. That's the truth. So the PK is over. Zero shots for the Ice Blacks. There's a chance right on, but Newmark missed the net. And Australia still has some life with them in the final minute of play here in the third period. Now up the wall. Ruddle with a soft forecheck here as Woodman will just retreat behind his own goal. I would have thought Woodman would have been the man you would have caught in the woods with the timber business. Well, maybe he, maybe he needs to get into the harmonica. Well, they're into winning games, and they are up by five at the moment. And they're representing their country well. And thus far, we have seen a bit of a repeat with the previous trans-Tasman matchup just last November across the ditch in Oz. 
where Australia won all three games. Looks like they're going to easily take home the first two here as a shot by Virasov is stopped. And it'll be, it'll be Regan as seconds wind down. He'll take it up to center ice and just dump it in. That played up just ahead of Webster. He can't control it. With just a few seconds left, and that will do it. A convincing 5-0 win for Australia. An end-to-end -end victory from them, and you have to like what you see if you are in the side of the Mighty Roos. Yep, Australia in total control in that game, and they demonstrated that clearly from start to finish. Most often, it's how they started, it's how you mean to finish, and they sent a big statement to the Kiwis with that performance here this evening. So there it is. Australia has clinched a victory of the Trans Tasman Challenge, winning the first two matchups between themselves and the Ice Blacks. There will be a third test. There will be played tomorrow. Puck will drop at 5.15 with still a lot to play for, especially on the New Zealand side. You gotta think they wanna build some momentum against this very talented, very skilled Australian team. Yes, Joel, the Kiwis got a lot to build from because they have certainly been part of a bit of an education this weekend so far. Hopefully they do take some learnings out of it and change their approach and put whatever learnings they have into practice as this is invaluable things that doesn't always happen with international play. In New Zealand, we are just, you know, we're a small island nation just like, well, I would say just like Australia. Australia is massive, but there is not a lot of other countries around to play this beautiful game of ice hockey against them. So a big victory here from Australia. The ninth time they have shut out New Zealand. So big props to Charlie Smart. Wasn't tested often, but was consistently in position, consistently covering up those rebounds. Did not give any opportunities for Ice Blacks to capitalize on anything, really. No, yeah, not a lot of shots against them, but he did stop them when he needed to. When he was called upon, he did. So two goals against. Arguably one in the own goal. So he really, in two games played, he's had two goals against him and stopped an awful lot of puck. And you got to like what you see from Australia. And Charlie Smart, it has been fun watching him develop in that goaltender position to become the force that he is now. So watch out for him for Newcastle in the upcoming year in that AIHL. Yeah, that'll be very exciting to watch, actually, for those of you who are not attuned to regularly seeing the Australian matchups. Um, that'll be a team definitely I'm keen to watch, as well as that CBR Brave you continually mention on this broadcast, um, as they are the most recent Goodall Cup champions. In fact, the Goodall Cup is the third oldest ice hockey trophy, apparently, in the world being played for an awful long time over the ditch. Third oldest in the entire world. Apparently so, 1909 it goes back to, and um, in here in New Zealand we haven't only been playing for what now is known as the Virgil Cup since the year 2004. It wasn't officially named the Virgil Cup until I think it was 2010. So a few years there the cup was just unnamed. It was the New Zealand Championship Trophy. Whereas in um, Australia the good old cup has been around for an awful long time. So there you go. Well, congrats to the Australian side. A well put together performance. Well earned victory here in Auckland. Seeing international ice hockey return. And the people of Tamaki Makoro, they're ready for it. We had sold out crowd. We're going to see another large capacity crowd tomorrow night. And hopefully we can see some more exciting hockey. There, you said it, Joel. So thank you very much for tuning into this live stream broadcast on behalf of Joel Rindelob and myself, Ian Wanmaker, and our whole team. Josh Cheers. Kretschmer and Michael Dominion, and as well as Ollie Curtis on the camera. We thank you all for sharing this beautiful ice hockey game with us. Kakita Eno.